What's going on guys? Today I want to make a video on how to put coilovers on a 89 Toyota Cressida. I picked up a set of Rev9 coilovers. I already put the rears in, but the fronts are welded in, so it's a little different than just bolting them up. It's basically you got to take the whole assembly out of the car, cut it and weld them in and reinstall them. So what I'll do here is I'll show you in the video where every bolt is, what you have to take out. Um, they didn't really send instructions with this set, so it's a little difficult if you don't know how to do it. So here I'll show you how much you need to cut what bolts you need to take out of the car, what you need to disassemble so you don't take too much out, and then, you know, cut it, put it together, and put it back in the car. It should be super easy. I already installed the rears because they're just bolt-in, and honestly, so far, it's a really good coilover. I know it's, like, budget and cheaper than some of the other coilovers out there, but for what I'm using this car for, it's perfect. So let's get right into it, and I'll show you what bolts you need to take out. First thing, you should have two bolts behind the caliper here to pull this off. Um, pull this the line all the way off basically back to the chassis here Just use zip tie and like zip tie it to the edge somewhere to hold it up for you This should be two bolts if you look underneath the knuckle here You're gonna have one on this side and one on the opposite side take those two out and Then one on the sway bar end link right here take that out And that's basically everything on the lower assembly here You're gonna wind up taking out this whole knuckle with the rotor this whole spring assembly And then last thing just drop these three nuts and it should come right out there's also going to be one, it looks like, sensor here with a bolt on the back side of the dust shield you're going to want to take off as well. I'm also possibly going to, going to be removing my dust shields, so I might also be cutting them off. You'll we'll see in the video. All right, so now that you have this whole assembly out of the car, you can really take a look at this piece of hunk and see how old the technology is. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this whole dust brake. It looks like it's already all bent up anyways. So I believe if we take these bolts out, I can remove this whole dust plate. If not, I'm gonna wind up cutting it out, but I'm gonna take the dust plate off and then we have to take a measurement down here for how much we actually need left over on this old shock to slide the new one on. So most of these weld on coilovers require anywhere from 30 to 50 millimeters off the base of this knuckle here okay so bc requires like 50 some of the other ends uh, some of the other ones are like 30 35 so i'm going to do about 45 inches because the bottom of the rev 9 ones it looks like they have about room for about 50 inches so i'd like to do it a little tiny bit shorter just so that i have room um, because i do want to slam this car possibly super low so i'm going to measure out from the base of this knuckle here 45 inches make a mark and then we're going to cut it straight down now when you do cut it there probably is going to be fluid in this chamber here so i'm going to set up some towels but i'm going to use bandsaw and try to make as straight as a cut as you can cut straight down and then you're going to have to clean the whole area up so everything's ready to be welded Okay, so as you can see, now that we've cut off um, and left about 45 millimeters on this, you take your sleeve off your coilover, check it out, and there you go. It should fit right on there, okay? 
And now next what you're gonna have to do is, now these didn't come like prepared already, so we're gonna have to clean all this up. And we're gonna have to clean the whole bottom base of this up as well for when you're welding, because you wanna make sure you have a clean surface. I also, like I said, I checked on removing the dust shield. You can take it off with these bolts, but then this is uh, the area under here sort of exposed and I feel like it's gonna get dirty. So what I chose to do was actually just cut the dust shield off and leave it uh, bolted up because it should help at least this inner gear or, or whatever's in here, this bearing area, from getting as much dust as it does have in there. So next what I'm gonna do is prepare these areas, get the welder out and uh, we'll start laying some fat beads. Definitely no professional welder, but that should hold. Feels very sturdy. Everything's set. So what we're gonna do is let that cool down next, and um, then we gotta paint it up, uh, mount it, mount the shock back into this, mount that up to the car, and uh, get everything all set. And there you go. Once you paint it and put the top end of the coilover back on, you're gonna have something like this. So I didn't do it too long or too short. It's definitely shorter than the stock length of the coil. But I wanted to do it just basically there so that we can get it back on the car and, uh, you know, not struggle with it being too short and having to jack up the lower control arm. Okay, so after you get it in, it's going to look a little something like this. You might have to just make your holes on top a little bit bigger. Mine didn't want to fit perfectly. But you're going to look something like this. I also did not route my brake cable through that uh, that square holder at the moment. When I do my hydro brake, I'm going to take the whole system apart, but I really don't want to bleed the system at the moment. So for my stock shock height, I'm going to start at three and a half inches here and see what that happen, what happens with that. Um, I don't know if it's too high or too short, but I figure the back is at three and a half. So let me start at the front with three and a half and we'll see what happens. I also noticed that it looks like the front sway bar uh, doesn't have a spot to reattach to. So we're going to try to remove that now. Um, if I can't take that all the way out because it almost looks like it goes to the front like subframe holder or something. Um, I'm going to take off just these little arms and we'll leave the front sway bar in for now until I figure out what I want to do with that. It's also very important make sure you put anti-seize on the uh, calipers because if you ever go to change your ride height and you don't put that on there after driving for a while, you will be screwed. So make sure to put this on. It's real cheap and it's worth the headache. Okay, so I wound up just taking off the end links on the sway bar because it looks like it's just too hard to take the front sway bar out at the moment with everything in. Um, I just want to sort of get the car on the ground and, and test everything out. But I took these off. We're going to leave the front sway bar just hanging in there for now. It should be fine. But cars on the ground, on uh, coilovers are on the rear and on the front at the moment. So this is with about three and a half inches on that coilover spacing. Um, I do have a pretty thick tire on here at the moment. This is just what I had on these rims. I'll definitely be running something a little more stretched. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I do have a, a crappy driveway to get out of, so I don't want to lower it too much. And I should have to roll the fenders. I'm actually going to have to roll the fenders if uh, I want to lower it anymore, especially with these wheels when I'm drifting and doing other stuff. But for now, I'm super happy with it. I'm going to take this thing outside. It is super cold here at the moment. So let me take it outside and get a, a good look at it a couple feet back. Once it settles, it'll, it should probably lower a little bit more, which will make me happy. But um, for now, it, it wasn't too hard of a setup. That's how you put coilovers on your Cressida. Um, and let's see how it looks outside. Okay, so here's the fitment outside with the, being able to step a couple feet away. I think it looks crispy. I am very happy with it for at the moment. Like I said, once I get better tires, 
I'll be able to drop it a little lower and roll the fenders and stuff. But for now, super happy with the install. That's about it though. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment. If you have any questions about the install, feel free to comment. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll try to help out whoever I can. But um, that's all the steps. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you later. Peace.